Alright folks, it's that time again. Time to go into a character mini-series in the hopes of something good, which in this case I actually do have high hopes because this mini isn't a standalone story. Instead, it's a start for what would become the ongoing Knuckles series. The cover is pretty damn nice, with Knuckles protectively standing before the final Chaos Emerald keeping the island afloat, while two silhouetted heads float in front of the floating island, and a more menacing being hovers above it all, looking down with a scream on its lips. It's an effective visual, though the low opacity on the floating heads makes them look odd against the detailed backdrop of the floating island. And then there's this fiery silhouette that's just shoved onto the cover there with very little rhyme or reason. It draws your eye for the wrong reasons and it looks really out of place. We open up on, oh my god, this artwork is gorgeous. After issue upon issue of dealing with Ken Penders' artwork, I'd forgotten that Knuckles could look this good. Anyway, looking at the actual story of the book, Knuckles has made his way into the conservatory, where he finds it littered with traps, both ancient and new. From laser arrays, to pitfalls, to dead drops, to falling blocks, to motion-activated guns, it's unclear how much of this was added by Archimedes and how many of them were here before, though I guess it does show that the Echidnas were, at one point, serious about keeping people out of this place. With no clear path forward, Knuckles decides to improvise. Improvise in this case being code for run through the death trap room and pray it works out. The action is actually pretty cool, though situations like this where the action is broken into panels when it looks like it was originally one big image looks a little strange to me. Despite the absurdity of his actions, he manages to get through, even getting the guns to shoot one another, destroying them, and giving him a moment of peace where he decides to give himself, and by extension the audience, a refresher on what happened during the events leading up to this issue. And man, these floor panels here really make me wish we could have had this artwork instead of Ken leading up to this. Even if Knuckles does look a little dopey in this one panel. Bleh. After a second page of recap, we go all Indiana Jones as Knuckles is chased down a massive hallway with a large boulder in hot pursuit. However, while Knuckles manages to get away from the boulder, the top of Mount Fate is suddenly blown off. Knuckles finds his way into a room with a portable combustor. It's basically a laser gun, but this isn't Shadow the Hedgehog, so they can't call it a laser gun. Using it to make his way through a giant metal door in his path just as a green glowing figure pulls itself from the wreckage of Mount Fate's destroyed summit. And as it continues to float toward the conservatory, Knuckles makes his way deeper as Archimedes starts to taunt him yet again for his failures that led him here, such as letting himself get separated from the Chaotix, which wasn't really his fault as we talked about in the Chaotix special, go watch that video, wink wink. Though he does give him praise for getting past all the traps in the conservatory, congratulating him on getting this far, just as Knuckles enters the deepest room, finding Archimedes, a fire ant in front of a camera, with all his friends enjoying a great big meal. Knuckles, while he's glad to see his friends aren't harmed, isn't very hungry, and demands some answers as to what the hell has been going on around here. He pieces some of it together concerning how he hardwired the robots and traps in the conservatory and how that explains how he managed to capture the separated Chaotix, though I'm pretty sure the thing that grabbed Espio didn't look anything like that. But he asks how the ant was able to appear and disappear, hound him for so long, and carve his name into solid rock. Archimedes demonstrates that he's a rather capable illusionist, disappearing and reappearing in a puff of smoke and then demonstrating how fire ants in this world got their name, able to breathe a burst of fire in front of them. Knuckles isn't really impressed, and still pretty peeved about what's going on. And finally, it looks like we're about to get some answers, as the ant states that his people have been helping to pull echidnas out of the fire since the origin of the floating island. But of course, we're interrupted by the figure that escaped Mount Fate, who has been steadily making his way into the conservatory while Knuckles was searching it and it is revealed to be Dimitri completely unharmed even after decades of being buried in stone, but he now proclaims himself to be Enerjack. Despite Archimedes immediately trying to warn the others away, Knuckles states that he has to be a fraud, as there's no way someone could survive what happened to Dimitri, immediately forgetting that the guy was powered by several Chaos Emeralds, as Enerjack points out. Knuckles and the others prepare to charge him anyway, confident that they have him outnumbered and outgunned, but Enerjack just waves his hand, catching and immobilizing them all with his energy. 
Enerjack states that the Chaotix could potentially prove useful to him in the future, but as for Knuckles and Archimedes, as two who are descended from those who ruined his plans initially, well they deserve a different fate. Rather than being smart and killing them, as all villains seem loath to do in this comic, he warps them to the middle of a massive desert in the middle of nowhere, and as Knuckles notes, it's gonna be a long walk home. Guys, I don't want to get your hopes or mine too high, but this is actually a really promising start. While we're still left hanging with quite a few questions as to why all of this was done to Knuckles, the chief mystery has finally been laid to rest. We're past the lore dumps for now. We're introduced to the brand new villain who, despite looking pretty damn ridiculous, does manage to make an imposing entrance, though at the expense of characters who haven't really seen any action in a long while. This was primarily a setup issue, building off of what we've already been told, but it's a very competent setup, and ends on a very intriguing cliffhanger that actually makes me want to read more. While it does still have difficulty with its dialogue being a bit too long-winded, and the two-page recap feels a little unnecessary when we're given a text recap at the start of the issue, for the most part, I enjoy the writing here. And I've mentioned it a few times already, but the artwork in this issue is gorgeous, especially compared to all the backup issues we've been seeing recently. Art Moeni is once again our artist, and my god, does he bring his A-game in this issue. And his excellent pencils and Harvo's inking is only enhanced all the more by the great coloring and shading of Kyle Hunter, who, to my knowledge, we haven't seen working on this comic before, and he makes a really good first impression here. There are a few hiccups here and there, where Knuckles looks a tad warped, and I honestly do have a hard time taking Enerjack seriously when he's in that weird getup. Where did he even get that stupid headpiece, anyway? But for the most part, I have nothing but positive things to say about the art and the issue in general. It's an impressively strong start, probably the strongest of the three character minis we've had to date. Next time, we'll continue the story with issue 2, and I really hope I haven't hyped myself up for nothing this time. See you all next time, everyone.